Welcome to the last video in my Crash Course Trigonometry series. In this video, we're going to talk about the law of sines and the law of cosines. So there's two more identities, and in both of these identities, we're discussing the relationship between the sides and the angles of a triangle. And we've talked about that relationship when we have a right triangle, but for any triangle, there is still a strong relationship between the measures of the angles and the lengths of the sides. So a little bit of a note on notation here. So when we have a triangle, which just for the whole video is just going to be A, B, C, although it doesn't, you know, the three points don't have to be called A, B, and C, but that's what we'll use uh, just for convenience. We're going to write sine A and cosine of A for the actual sine and cosine of that angle that's formed by A. So if I have a triangle here and the sides or the, the points are A, B, and C, this angle here at point A, I'm just going to call that angle capital A. And this angle here at B, I'm just going to call that angle capital B. And the angle at C, I'm going to call capital C, just for convenience. And the side opposite point A, we're going to call that little a. The side opposite capital B, we're going to call that little b. And the side opposite capital C, we're going to call that little c. So just as a convention, we're going to be doing that for the whole video. So with that in place, the law of sines says that the ratio of the sine of your angle to the length of the opposite side is the same no matter which side and which angle you're talking about. So sine of capital A divided by little a, that's equal to sine of capital B divided by little b, and that's equal to the sine of capital C divided by little c. And actually this is really three identities all in one, because the first thing that it says is that these two ratios are equal, and the second thing that it says is that these two ratios are equal, and then the third thing it says is that these two ratios are equal. And so depending on what it is that we actually want to know about our triangle, we'll use whichever pair of ratios being equal uh, gets us the information that we want. And now the law of cosines is explicitly three identities. And this is just saying that the square of one of the sides is the sum of the squares of the other two sides. Now, if you stop there, if you just sort of imaginary, draw an imaginary line there, that's exactly the Pythagorean theorem. But of course, that's not going to be true for general triangles. So in general, what's true for triangles is that those are equal if you then subtract 2BC times the cosine of that angle. And that's true no matter which side you're talking about. So again, if I've got a triangle here, if this is A, B, and C, what this first version of my identity says is that if I take that angle capital A, the length of the opposite side, if I square that, that's going to be B squared plus C squared minus 2BC times the cosine of that angle A. So hopefully you see the similarities between each of these three identities. Once you notice that pattern, it's really easier to just remember one of them. Okay, so what do we do with the, these identities? I should say that um, now I know I've proved some of the identities. I haven't proved some of the other identities that we've talked about in the past. I'm not going to talk about the proofs of these identities because they really involve some geometric principles that are kind of outside the scope of what this video series is trying to do. So we're going to focus on actually using the identities. And what we do is we talk about solving a triangle. And what we want to know is that when we have some of the information about a triangle, some of the angles or some of the sides, we want to be able to figure out the missing information, the missing sides or the missing angles. And which law we end up using is going to kind of depend on what we know, what we have. So I'm going to work through several examples and hopefully you'll catch on to how it is we're going to use these different laws of sines and cosines. So here's our first example. So we're supposing that we have a triangle that's given where we know that angle A is 40 degrees, angle B is 75 degrees, and side A is 5. Now I should also say that as we go through these examples, everything here is going to be in degrees, which is a little bit uh, kind of contradicting myself, uh, whereas earlier I said everything should be in radians. For these kinds of applications, it's typically uh, everything is kept in degrees. So I'll have to convert from what my calculator tells me from the radians that my calculator gives me to degrees to match up with the way the problem was stated. Okay, so what are we being told here? So we've got this triangle, ABC, and they're telling us that angle A is 40 degrees, angle B is 75 degrees, and then remember, little a is the side opposite capital A, so little a is 5. And now solving the triangle means I want to know what's this missing angle at C, what's this side opposite C, and what's this side opposite B. Those are the three pieces of information that I want to figure out, and once I've figured out those three pieces of information, I will have solved, quote unquote, the triangle. So let's start with uh, find, figuring out little b. Why am I going to start there? Well, I know capital A, I know capital B, and I know little a. So if I think about the law of sines, the law of sines says that the sine of capital A divided by little a is equal to the sine of capital B divided by little b. 
And so there are four variables in that equation, but I know three of them. I know that capital A is 40 degrees. I know little a is five. I know capital B is 75 degrees. And little b is something that I can now figure out because I know everything else in this formula. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 5 and multiply both sides by b. Sometimes people call that cross multiplying, but that's what I'm doing here. So this is going to be 5 times the sine of 75 degrees. And then b is going to be 5 times the sine of 75 degrees divided by the sine of 40 degrees. So now at this point, you can either put your calculator back in degree mode to figure that out, or you can just convert 75 degrees and 40 degrees to radians and then plug those into your calculator. Either way, that's going to work out to be about 7.51357. And that's the value of little b. So now the angle at c, we know two of the three angles of our triangle, and we know that the sum of the angles of a triangle has to be 180. So C is going to be 180 minus that 40 plus that 75, which works out to be 65 degrees. So that's the angle at C. And now we can use the law of sines again, but this time we'll figure out what little c is. So sine of A divided by little a, that's the sine of C divided by little c. So that's going to give me the sine of 40 degrees divided by 5 is the sine of 65 degrees divided by little c. Very similar to what we just did. So C times the sine of 40 degrees is equal to five times the sine of 65 degrees. So C is gonna be five times the sine of 65 divided by the sine of 40. And that's gonna work out to be approximately 7.04982. And that's side C. Okay, so let's move on to another example. So this time, we're, it's pretty similar to what we had before. So we have a triangle and they give us three pieces of information. But this time, instead of giving us two angles and a side, this time they've given us two sides and an angle. So we know that little a is three, little b is two, and angle a is 43. So again, we might think, well, I know little a, I know little b, I know capital A. So again, we're thinking law of sines. So sine of a divided by little a is sine of b divided by little b because again i know three out of the four things in that equation and so let's use that to solve but this time what's missing is an angle so as you'll see this will work out slightly differently so let's plug in what we know we know that capital a is 43 degrees we know little a is three we don't know capital b that's what we're trying to figure out but we know little b is two so now all we have to do is multiply both sides by two. That's gonna give us sine of B is equal to two times the sine of 43 degrees divided by three, which is approximately 0.454666. So what that means is we're looking for an angle whose sine is 0.454. But you might be thinking, oh, well, I'll just use inverse sine to figure out what the, the angle is. But the problem is that there's actually two angles that this uh, B could actually be because there's two angles that could be the angles of a triangle that have a sine of 0.454. There's one in quadrant one, which is what the inverse sine function would give me, but there's also one in quadrant two. So I can use the inverse sine function, but I have to be careful about how I interpret the answer. So one solution certainly will be B equals the inverse sine of that 0.454 number which is approximately 0.471997 radians. Remember, if your calculator is in radian mode, that's the kind of answer that the inverse sine function is going to get you. So if I convert that to degrees, that's going to be 27.0434 degrees. So that's this angle here. This angle here in quadrant one is 27.0434 degrees. But there's another angle in quadrant two this angle here, and that's going to be 180 minus 27.0434 degrees, which works out to be 152.957. So at the moment, it looks like there's two solutions for what my capital B could be. But the problem is that I've already got a 43 degree angle, and now this solution, this 152 solution, would tell me that additionally in my triangle, I have a 152 degree angle. But that's too many degrees. 43 plus 152 is already 195. That's too much. 
I don't even have a third angle yet and I've already exceeded 180 degrees from my triangle. So this solution is not a solution that I can use because it's too big of an angle. Now, sometimes you'll be working through problems like this and you'll actually get two solutions that could both be right. So sometimes when we solve our triangle, there's actually two possible triangles that the given information could match up with. So just be on the, on the alert for that. So we're not always going to throw away the angle from quadrant two. Sometimes it will actually be an angle that could fit in our triangle. But in this example, it doesn't. So that's capital B, 27.0434 degrees. So capital C is gonna be 180 minus the sum of the other two angles, 43 plus 27.0434, which works out to be 109.957. So that's angle C, here's angle B. And so what we now are missing is side C, and we're gonna use the law of sines like we did before. So then we're gonna use the law of sines, sine of A divided by A is the sine of C divided by C. That's gonna give me, just like before, plug in, I know capital A, I know capital C, I know little a, plug in and solve very similar to what we did in example one. I'll just skip to the end here and tell you that it works out to be 4.13469, but you should verify that on your own and make sure you can work that out. Very similar to what we did in example one. Okay, let's do another example. So this time we're given a triangle where we have A, B, C again. So A is two, B is four, and C is six degrees. So this time we can't immediately use the law of signs because there's no combination of, there's no pair of letters, A and B or A and C or B and C, where we would know three out of the four variables in a law of signs equation because we have little a, little b, and capital C, there's no way to get a law of signs where we wouldn't have two pieces of unknown information. So here's an example where we're gonna use the law of cosines. So with the law of cosines, we've got our angle here, we've got capital C, and so the law of cosines is gonna tell us C squared is A squared plus B squared minus two AB cosine capital C. And so we know everything in that equation except for little c. So this is gonna help us figure out what little c is. So little a is two, so two squared plus four squared minus two times two times four times cosine of 60 degrees. So that's four plus 16, two times two times four is 16 and cosine of 60 degrees turns out to just be one half. And so this is 12. And so C squared is 12, that means C is the square root of 12. Again, normally when we take the square root of both sides of an equation, we get a plus or a minus, but in this case, C represents distance and distance can't be negative. So we just get the square root of 12. So that gives us our distance C. So now that we have the length of C and the angle C, we can use the law of sines again, just like we did before, to figure out what our value is. So for example, sine of A divided by A equals sine of C divided by C. And again, the only missing piece of information I have in that equation is capital A. So the sine of capital A divided by little a, which is two, is the sine of 60 degrees divided by little c, which is square root of 12. Multiply both sides by two, we get the sine of a is the sine of six, is two times the sine of 60 degrees, which is the square root of three over two, divided by the square root of 12. That's gonna be the square root of three divided by the square root of 12. That's the square root of three twelfths which is the square root of one fourth, which is one half. So that means that capital A is an angle whose sine is one half. Again, there are two such angles that could potentially be in a triangle. There's 30 degrees here in quadrant one, but there's also 150 degrees over here in quadrant two. But as before, this triangle doesn't have enough room to fit a 150 degree angle because we've already got a 60 degree angle. So that 150 gets thrown away and so that means that A is 30 degrees. And then finally, B is going to be the angles that we have left over, number of degrees we have left over in this triangle, 180 minus 30 plus 60, which works out to be 90 degrees. So it turns out that this was actually a 30, 60, 90 right triangle, we just didn't know it. Okay, let's do one more example. So in this case, we're given all three sides and we don't have any angles at all. So again, I'll draw a little picture to make this easier to think about, A, B, and C. So A is three, B is six, and C is seven. So again, since we don't have any angles at all, 
we're, we can't use the law of sines. We have to use the law of cosines because there's no way to set up a law of sines equation where we wouldn't have two pieces of unknown information. So it doesn't really matter which angle we use for the law of sines. I'm going to go ahead and figure out angle C first. So C squared equals A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cosine C. And again, what we're missing there is capital C. So we know little c is 7, so we've got 7 squared is equal to 3 squared plus 6 squared, minus 2 times 3 times 6 times cosine of c. 7 squared is 49, 3 squared is 9, 6 squared is 36. 2 times 3 times 6, that's 36, times the cosine of c. And now what we're looking to do is get the cosine of c by itself. 9 plus 36 is 45, subtract 45 from both sides, we get 4 equals negative 36 times cosine of c. Divide both sides by negative 36. So we get cosine of c is negative 1 ninth. So again, we're looking for an angle whose cosine is negative 1 ninth. And if you're worried about the unit circle this time, we don't have to be worried. Because there's two spots on the unit circle where my cosine would be negative 1 ninth, but those two spots are in quadrants 2 and 3. And I can't have an angle in quadrant 3 because that angle just by itself is already more than 180 degrees, and we can't have that be one of the angles in our triangle. So the only angle that this could possibly be is this angle in quadrant 2, and that angle is the inverse cosine of negative 1 ninth. So we can just plot that in our calculators. So we have to be worried when we're using inverse sine for these kinds of problems. We don't have to be worried when we're using inverse cosine just because of the way the inverse cosine function is defined. So this is going to work out to be approximately, again using my calculator, approximately 96.3794 degrees. So that's my angle C. And again, we can use either the law of cosines again, basically the exact same thing we just did, but for either angle A or angle B, or now that we know one of our angles, we can use the law of sines. So either way, law of sines or law of cosines is going to get me that angle A is 25.2088 degrees. Now, I'm not showing you the details there, but if you want a practice problem, go ahead and actually try to find out angle A both ways. Use the law of sines and use the law of cosines separately. Both of those methods should get you 25.2 degrees, and it's a good practice problem. And then finally, once we know angles A and C, Figuring out angle B is just a matter of taking 180 minus the sum of these two angles. 180 minus A plus C, and that's going to work out to be 58.4119 degrees. Okay, so in this video, what did we do? We learned about the law of sines and the law of cosines. We used those laws to solve triangles. And what solving a triangle means is taking given information and using either the law of sines or the law of cosines, or sometimes both, to figure out the, the information that's missing. So that's it for this series on crash course trigonometry. So let me know if there's any other trigonometric topics you'd like to learn more about. Make, uh, leave a comment if you enjoyed these videos or if these videos were helpful for you. I, I love hearing from folks who uh, tell me that the videos are helpful. So I um, hope you enjoyed it, hope it was helpful, and see you in the next series.